Okay, I'm going to do a few videos here on the Atlas signal system here and how to hook it up, hook it up onto the layout, and uh, first of all we got, I actually have a signal that I took out of the box, it's just a single um, aspect, just one signal head, okay, here, and this here is um, the plug after you've drilled a hole and run this down through through your layout, you plug this into here, to here, and then this end here gets plugged into the signal board. So I have a newer one here. This is the, the newer Atlas signal board here, and it gets plugged into the board here. And then this is the older one here. So I have some of these. I'll open this up here. These for a while. And you can actually integrate both of them. So if you already have some of these on your layout, you can still integrate the new signal control board. You can chain them together. Of course, here's the instruction booklet that comes with the um, with the older version of the signal control board. And uh, the newer signal control board, which is this one right here, um, that doesn't come with an, an instruction in the box. You got to go online, and and, and they, they they have a really nice uh, setup online sh to show you how to hook it up and to and to operate it. And I also have something here I got off the internet here that you can get to, and this shows you how to hook the actual the unit up here. To the NCE uh, BD20, which is right here, and then this is the original control board, the smaller one, okay, which would be this one, okay. Now I found the the actual instructions that comes with the new signal board or the new signal upgraded signals to system. Um, so we'll look in here and the one thing I've figured out here now by looking at everything is the signal plug on the new board is bigger. The plug is bigger so you have to get you have to buy their their um, signal attachment cable uh, to, to plug anything into the newer board here because as you see the older board here, J3 takes, where is it, that one, yeah, J3, right here. This J3 here is a smaller plug, and the older plugs plug into here from the signal cable like that. See, they plug in, but they are too small here for the, for the newer cable. So you have to get the new cable to plug into the new the, the newer updated boards this plug here on both of them are the same all the signals have this same plug on the other end so this one I can use the old boards but not the new boards so anyway I'm going to show you this. This is the cable that you need to hook up the new board. 7030050. Okay. And now if you use, uh, here's the control board here. Okay. And if you buy the whole uh, signal starter set, that's this one right here. Let me mark this off here. The starter set. The starter set will come with that cable, which would be on this thing up on top. That's going to have the signal, the control board, an analog detector, and and the and the cable to hook the signal to the board. So, okay, let me show you this here. Um, when you hook up, the, this is the new control board. Uh, you can 
depending on how you set up JP1 and JP2, um, you can use common anoid or common cathode setup, which I think is a, a reverse of polarity. That's all it is. Um, and the original Atlas signals are common cathode. So the older one here, you can hook up common cathode to. So you could probably you can just hook up on um, the older Atlas signals with this. With the new board, you can actually I think you can hook up um, other manufacturers too. Um, uh, 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 signals, um, and they make cables to attach to this that you can attach to other manufacturers for the older one. Now, these the newer ones come with screws and bushings to attach it under the table there. Okay. The older ones, if you have those, come with these things here that you have to mount up, up, underneath. They snap on. Let me show you. See, so you take them like this, and you and you can snap them on like this. Okay, they go into that hole there. You snap them there. So you snap it on there, and that's good to go. And you do it on the other side. Alrighty, here's the um, here's the one that I mounted. When I mounted right here, see, mounted it on two uh, two pieces of uh, of one by here that I ripped down. So it's three quarters by three quarters, and that gives enough clearance underneath so all this stuff clears when we screw it up underneath like this. And then that'll be heading, that'll be face down, and you can plug everything into there. Okay, and here's the uh, two um, of, of, of the same BD20s. Okay, right here I've, as you can see, I've soldered in a quarter watt resistor pot there to to um, adjust the sensitivity. This one has the. Um, Give you a false reading with with the detector, but anyway, um, we're going to use this one because I have that soldered in. This one does not have one soldered in yet, which I have to. You can see where you do it right there. Those three holes solders are right into there. And the resistor I used here is um, it's like a uh, you can you can use a 4.7 K to 30,000 K. I'm not exactly sure what this one is because I did it. Uh, I did it before and I'm not sure what it is, but it works. So that helps with the sens sensitivity. You can adjust it. Of course, this is our signal here. This is, a, this is an, an older signal, so this is common cathode. Okay, and you got it's you know I got my plug in it already here, and this end here goes into the where is it here? This end here goes into the into the older board. Nice signals. And obviously the first thing you want to do after you get this mounted under the layout is hook, drill a hole, run your signal down through, and then you're going to plug your signal in to the extension cable here. It's very easy, you just have to remember that the pins are on the top, so it goes in like this, and it pops right in like that. Right? Now you take this and you plug it into J3 on the board here, on the older board. It plugs right in. Okay, now your signal is connected. And of course your, your signal comes with one of these uh, little uh, the detail boxes here that you put on the layout. Um, so there we go, we got this signal hooked up. And now we need to power this up. Alrighty. 
I got this all hooked up here. Let me show you what I did. All right. If you can see it here, I got a menagerie. I'm sorry. But right down here is a Prodigy Express DCC track bus. Comes out of here. Comes right out of here. Goes under here. And then I've, down here, I've suitcased off two feeders that come off of here and go up to the track here and here. Okay? Here's the two feeders. The one goes right to the track. The other one comes around here, hooks into a wire that goes around the NCE DB20 and goes through and back to the other side. All right. I'm in power. These two come over. One of them goes to the ground, which is the blue, goes to the ground side. Up this one. If, if I, if I uh, flip this one over, you can see it right here. Okay. Ground, like this. Okay. Flip it like this. Goes to the ground. That's one side of the power. That's the um, common side. The 5 plus to 12 volt goes to the actual power side. And then the logic goes to the DIN over here on this side of the board. Okay, and of course that comes out. We did before. That goes to the up to the actual signal, which is now green, as you can see. Okay, and then these two wires here power common. These go to a regular power pack where I have it on the DC accessory over here. It's, I'm actually having it on a throttle so I can have a separate power for the signal system. Okay, and then here's my actual Prodigy th throttle and then here's the bus line that comes out into the two suitcase connectors here and the black one comes up here and it hooks into the to that and goes to that side and then the green comes out of here and goes over to here and that goes through the the detectors transformer now over here and that hooks back into that okay there's no power to the train right now and it's green as soon as I go over here to the throttle turn the throttle up to one two now the train is moving, and as you can see, we have a red signal. If I turn the power off to the train, to zero, it's going to go to the yellow, obviously, and then to the, then to the, to the green. And there it is. Okay, go on the other opposite direction of the train. Come back here. I have to get the train moving here. She goes to red, train moves, and then it shuts off. And it goes back to green, to, to yellow and then to green. That is the the default setting if you're just going to use them separately. If you when you chain them together, the yellow will act as if um, it'll be an approach to a block that's not occupied, but the following block is occupied. Okay, and you do that. When you chain them together with these two, that, that right there, and then this one here, you chain them together. Now you, you need a chain of these things for each direction, okay? So each direction your signals go, you got you, you have a set of these things all chain, chained together. Then you're going to get the same amount and run them back the other way, which I guess is pretty obvious. Anyway, okay, well, that's going to conclude um, video number one. Um, video number two, we'll do some installation on the layout. We will install, um, we'll just install it on the layout and see how it works when, when we run a train through it. And uh, that should be coming soon. So, a like and subscribe. Um, and I'll keep these videos coming.